How would you like an effective ethical interrogation template that's highly productive? Stick with me, tip 41, and we'll find out. Hey, welcome back. Good to be with you again. This is Stan Walters, your host. Tip number 41, an interview and interrogation, 101 tips for interviewers. So how about an effective ethical persuasion tactic, principle, a template that you can work from for every interview? Now, remember our four-part narrative interview process. We've talked about it numerous times in the last episode of how that's done. And you remember the outline is orientation, where you get your baseline, your constant. We talked last time about the narrative and the narration portion. And by the way, you can go to my on-demand courses uh, online, and there, there's a one-hour course on there that will uh, demonstrate for you, talk to you how to do uh, that uh, full narrative template. So I recommend you go back and uh, look at that in detail and connect with that. And the third piece is that cross-examination portion. Now, remember, what we have done during the narration, we look for all the problem spots the subject has disclosed during the narration. This could be gaps in time, avoidance of places, avoiding naming people, where you have hot spots or what we call incriminating stress points. So those become your topics that you will focus on when you move to cross-examination. But how do we bring those up? How do we impact those? And remember that the, the truly professional interrogator doesn't need to manipulate or to coerce their subjects to talk. The professional interviewer persuades the subject that it's in that subject's best interest to do so. So remember, we're not looking at a coercive process here. Also, remember, do not lie and make up evidence on this. We talked about lying in a more recent episode about lying to your subject and the, the pitfalls with that process. And that could damage your status and damage your case as being a person lying in the room. So you, you find that topic here. Now, this P-A-S-S, -S, I want you to remember that, P-A-S-S, -S, PASS. It's an easy way to remember this. This persuasion tactic and process has been used in at least 60 years, if not longer, in persuading people in all types of situations, environments, into making decisions. You see it all the time. Now, I'm going to do a little example of PASS, and once you hear this, think about it, and you can translate it. You're going to hear it around you all the time. So here's how it works. See if you can find the problem, the agitation, the solution, satisfaction. Okay, you ready? You have cable. Your cable goes out. You get upset. You throw a fit. Your child sees you throw a fit. They go to school. They get upset. They throw a fit. They get thrown out of school. They quit school. She finds a guy who also quit school. They start dating. They fall in love. They get married. They have a son. You have a grandson that wears a dog collar. Don't have a grandson who wears a dog collar. Get direct TV. <laughs> okay. Did you follow it? Okay. Here's the problem is your cable. Catch that? So with your subject, we might say, okay, Alan, the problem, uh, we have a problem with, you can use the word problem. Uh, I have a question about, or there's an issue about, or, you know, you told me that your mother had never met this girl before. Or, uh, Tom, you told me when the, the bad guy came in, he was robbing the convenience store, and you were the clerk, you said this, I have a question here about so-and-so. So there, you set what the problem is. The agitation portion, now you're not activating or harassing or intimidating the subject. Okay, what you're doing is you're activating the awareness that a problem affects them directly, just like the direct TV commercial did. If you had cable that goes out, okay, you get upset, seeing how that brought the viewer in, correct? Okay, so that you activate it. This is the problem that you have with this, and people are gonna have difficulty. Here's the conflicting information. This is the time, by the way, we'll start using Sue, strategic use of evidence. Remember that? We have this statement. This video seems to show. Surveillance photograph tells us. Your computer uh, log, uh, log in on this terminal shows this. So you agitate them. We need to straighten this out. This can't go further because people will not understand. If this goes further, then stories are going to grow. Then there's going to be tales that have been told about you. I think a person has a right to explain their particular point of view and to what happened to them and has a right to be heard. And so we're putting the solution into the hands of the subject. Solution is to straighten this out. The solution to this is to clarify, give us more details, talk some more. See how I'm doing that now? And now I haven't uh, abused the subject, haven't got aggressive, haven't coerced or manipulated the subject. 
The solution also should provide the subject satisfaction. They should see in their mind, considering the alternatives, here's this, 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 and this. What could go bad? I have the choice. I can control the outcome that I think's the best for me, that the best solution would be. So again, problem, agitation, solution, satisfaction. Very effective, ethical persuasion process. Easy to input to work around any one of your interviews. Look for the topic areas. Those become the problem points and address them and continue the dialogue as you focus tighter on a particular problem, giving the subject an option to find what's best for them. Great to be with you again. Be sure to subscribe. Please hit the like button below. I'd like to, to push this up in the ranking so I get uh, more of the issues out. Remember, my goal is to tell every investigator is, is the go-to interrogator that gets information. And the only way I can do that is to get this into the uh, network and get folks aware of it. Be sure to check out the website. Look at the all-demand courses that I told you about, the narrative process, uh, other interviewing process, the myths of body language. Pocket Guy, by the way, has in there a section, more explanation of the PASS process. So take a look at the Pocket Guide as your quick uh, go-to manual before and after and during the interrogation. So see you again soon. Be safe and be back for our tip number 42. Take care.